you, you had mentioned that uh, Trotsky did not identify himself as a Jew in any way. What did he write about the Jewish problem or Jewish issues? What did he have in his writings? Well, this is one of the very subtle things I tried to explore in the book. Um, every moment in Trotsky's life, when he encounters personally or nearby physical violent anti-Semitic attacks, he responds, whether it's the Kishinev pogrom in 1903, whether it's the pogroms following the first revolution in 1905, where thousands of Jews were killed, Trotsky organized defense units, during the Russian Civil War, when he was head of the Red Army, he sent Red Army units to intervene against pogroms directed against Jews in Ukraine. And, you know, he covered the Bayless trial. He didn't go to Ukraine. Obviously, he's in Vienna in 1913, but he's reading about it every day and writing about it. He's very outspoken about these attacks on Jews and these unwarranted attacks on this claim that a Jew had killed a Christian child to use the blood for matzah. And I found in one of his essays in the late 1930s, on the eve of World War II, he calls to mind the figure of Bayless as a metaphor for the vulnerability of Jews and for Europe as a whole on the eve of this cataclysm. So I do believe that Trotsky was more of a Jew in spite of himself. Now, he was not sympathetic to any idea of Jewish autonomy or Jewish independence. He, he couldn't accept the Bund. And, you know, some people, Yuli Martov denounced the Bund as Zionists who, had, who were afraid of seasickness, that they wanted Jewish autonomy, but they didn't want to go to Palestine. Um, so Trotsky was absolutely opposed to uh, the ideas of the Bund for Jewish autonomy in Europe. He was not sympathetic, of course, to Bureau Bajan, which is this fake artificial Jewish homeland, Jewish district that Stalin created in the late 1920s. He was not sympathetic to that. And many people rejected that in the Soviet Union, though people had some illusions and supported it. When I wrote about Ilya Ehrenberg, Ehrenberg also was dismissed. It. But Trotsky was not sympathetic to Zionism because he just felt that for Trotsky, only one thing could cure everything, the proletarian revolution. Now, it's true that by the late 1930s and the rise of Hitler, he grudgingly admitted that Jews needed a haven, a refuge, that Palestine could serve as that. So, and after all, that is one component of Zionism, that Jews need a haven of one place they can go to where they're secure. Um, and I want to give him that. And he wrote that in the letter. He was approached by many people in Palestine in the 30s from the Yeshuv, um, Yiddish editors in Europe and elsewhere, writing to him, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about Hitler? And he admitted he had never really studied the Jewish problem closely. It wasn't in the forefront of his mind. But let's, let's say in the early 1930s with the rise of Hitler, Trotsky said explicitly, if there's war in Europe, there will be widespread attacks on the Jews. He understood the Jews were vulnerable. He understood why they were vulnerable. And he just didn't know how he could help them, other than say we need a proletarian revolution. And that was one of his tragic flaws. 